guys, I'd love to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel and uh, welcome back all the loyal subscribers to the channel. I thank you for your continued support on the message. I had a few people hit me up and miss the weekly video. Um, that was not, uh, by some presumptions, uh, my assessment that there hasn't been any news with Hylion. Um, I, I wouldn't not do a video uh, based on those uh, pretenses. As a matter of fact, it's kind of the opposite, actually. I think now is the very time that um, the message needs to be uh, supported. I think that uh, people's sentiment needs to be discussed. Um, I think when we quantify the highly on opportunity, I think you can quantify it in two different baskets. Um, one basket is the stock, and the other basket is the company. And those are the two things that I think are the most intriguing to talk about. I think when we talk about the company or the stock, we can talk about a bearish or a bullish thesis on on either side of the house, and everybody's got their opinions out there. I, I totally get it. But I think in times like this, I, I don't think either one of those two things um, are as important as investor sentiment. And I, I think that people truly need to understand where we currently are here, closing out 2022 and entering into 2023. Um, the stock at the time of filming this video, I, I had a few moments to actually throw down because I've got a little time off during the holiday. Um, and I've actually been busy taking care of things that I put on the shelf uh, during my busy uh, time. And and this uh, latter summer, spring, uh, latter summer, fall, uh, and now into the winter has been one of the busiest times of my life. It's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's been to the grid, and uh, I've had too much to do. But had some time here to to assess, and the, the stock has just hit an all-time low today. The all-time low before was $2.34, I believe. So to have broken that support, and I'm watching the stock closely. I watch the stock closely every single day. Um, that's not a prerequisite of success in stock market investing. As a matter of fact, it's uh, probably a futile uh, effort, but you guys need to understand I'm cut from a different cloth. Um, I have the discipline to engage in that monitoring and not allow uh, through that monitoring to allow my stock decisions to be wavered one way or the other. Okay. Uh, my conviction was set two years ago. Okay. Now, before we get to investor sentiment and answering the age-old question of what investors need to do right now or what they can do or if they feel like they're hopeless or whatever it might be, before we get to that, I do want to talk about the company and I do want to talk about the stock. Okay. I try what, with, with all my heart to tell you when a certain opinion or a statement or a comment that I may make uh, is, is coming from my own bias, okay? I don't think there's a whole lot of use with that. I really don't. But there's people out there that would just be as convicted on the bearish side and would argue tooth and nail. And inevitably, that camp could be right. Okay. If the stock goes to zero, ceases to exist, they bag up the Austin plant and they close the doors and they lock it only to be taken over by walkers someday. Um, it is yet to be determined and, and then they'll get their, um, they'll get their due uh, opportunity. But when we look at the facts and they are a plenty, that's where I like to spend the majority of my time. That's what I consider to be my wheelie house. Okay. When we talk about management, when we talk about the board of directors, when we talk about the company as a whole and the hirings that are going on, um, I'd like to uh, spend just a moment and send my condolences out to the greater Hylion uh, community, the greater Hylion family, and the Olcala family as well. Ed uh, just passed away. There was news that uh, he was uh, either suffering from or um, succumbed to the um, effects of leukemia. And so on behalf of the channel and on behalf of the uh, greater independent investor channel audience, our condolences are sent out uh, to the Olcala uh, family and to um, uh, anyone who knew friends and family of Ed Olcala. I know he was a, a big influence and one of the original uh, inceptors of Hylion and by Thomas Healy's admission, 
uh, probably offered quite a bit of mentorship to Thomas Healy, who is not an old wise man. Okay. He's, uh, he's one of the younger guys. And I, I tell you what, there's some real value to be had there um, between a guy like Thomas Healy, who is, uh, comes from academia, um, you know, the youngest billionaire to reach that status at such a young age and, and take his company to public markets. Um, there's something to be said there about the mentorship that was uh, uh, presumed to be provided by Mr. Alcala uh, during his time at Oca uh, at uh, at Highland. So condolences go out there. But I I digress. Hylion, in a nutshell, is one of those companies that is fascinating. It has um, acquired the Carno technology in 2022, which. It, from a value proposition, I put a, a $50 million valuation on it as it stands now. Now, with an infusion of about $100 million of research and development to bring the Carno to commercialization and make it a commercially viable product, um, you can attach a multiple on that, probably 10x. I wouldn't suggest that it's a billion dollars worth of value yet. However, I would certainly uh, make the the case for a 5x valuation or or maybe even a 5x from the value that I assess now at 50 million uh, in the company. Right now, Hylion is being given no credit for its cash position, its uh, eventual uh, step into commercialization, which is a real question for me as to what that means now, things that I'll monitor into 2023 as we go. I don't want to make any presumptions at all as to where I think is, um, is going to be the direction of that, because the looming questions that I have is how they're going to mass scale in the thousands of their units and get those uh, installed properly. Because I don't think right now they have the ability, at least they have not announced any of that. And I don't think that their relationship uh, with the OEM is as solid as what's been publicly uh, shared with the, the greater investor uh, uh, audience. And so, you know, things to, to challenge with the company, but I just want to bring your attention to where the company is here closing out 2022, where it has been, and set kind of a range for yourself and ask yourself three questions. Has the company digressed? Has the company maintained a neutral posture or has the company evolved? Those are the three questions when you want to ask yourself in 2022. The bears may say, well, it's going to zero. That's not what I asked, Okay. Now just sit back a second and relate, relax your hate for just a second with this company because um, I, I know there's a lot of detractors out there and I know there's a lot of people who believe that the world would be better off without Hylion. Um, That takes more of an imagination than mine to assume that the world needs Hylion. It needs the solution. And it's one of the very few, if not one of the leaders in the compressed natural gas and renewable natural gas uh, phase um, that we're in right now, this transformative phase away from diesel. And there's actual fleet trials going on as we speak, okay? Nikola just had a big announcement today with regard to their credits that they're going to earn for their work in Los Angeles, California with hydrogen, okay? And this is good for the industry as a whole, okay? These developments as they happen are, are fantastic. Either we keep the status quo, and we remain with diesel, or we look to the future with these looming mandates on the horizon and look at who the few players are in the space that can actually opt up uh, a technology to bring to bear as early as it might be in the stages of that evolution, which is where we are. We have to look with scrutinizing lenses on what the developments are of these companies. But if you do ask that rhetorical question, it'll give you that idea of the progress of, of the company as we stand here in 2022. And it gives you, you guys that have been with me a long time, you understand I'm a deductive reasoner, okay? In other words, what is the odds of certain things happening, okay? And let me pose it to you in a different way to kind of framework the context of where I think that Hylion will go into 2023, which I will extend a little bit to the first two quarters here in Q4 
Q1 and Q2 into 2023 as really being uh, 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 on anybody's guess. Okay, and and my guess is that it's going to continue to be a bridging phase. Maybe we get a little appreciation in the stock and we end up five, six dollars over the coming couple of quarters. Great. That reprieve will be welcomed as far as I'm concerned to actually stop what's going on right now, which is uh, not an exacerbated downtrend. Um, This is more of a controlled uh, um, controlled sell off in grander markets. So I think it's more of a grander sell-off in the microcap space than it is where uh, some may presume that there's just no interest in Hylion. Well, there's no interest in Hylion. There's no interest in the stock market right now as a whole. Okay, And I think those pressures are really what is weighing on the stock right now between two and a dollar and three dollars and four and a dollar fifty it's really immaterial at this point to try to wrap your mind around what the true valuation of the company is okay but what we need to do is we need to focus on this bucket over here when we talk about the company and the progress that's being made with the company i mentioned the carno generator in 2022 i i think that will be one of those catalysts that when we look back, fell on deaf ears in the market. And I think in 2023, 2024, 2025, um, that is going to be a misrepresentation of how big that opportunity was with the Carnot generator uh, acquisition. I digress. Other progresses that were made in 2022 were from seemingly some unpredictable uh, aspects, okay? The ACT and the uh, the mandates uh, and the incentive programs were a couple of things that were announced in 2022 that were also positives for the company that really do speak to that. Have they evolved? Are they remaining neutral or are they digressing in their progress? Okay, I'm not going to answer that for you. You guys know where my loyalty lies. And I look at 2022 with regard to the company and an investor in the company as extremely positive. There's not a whole lot of negatives I can find, guys. I can be critical on the fact that I think they need to be more transparent on the news. I think they should come up with an internal goal of one tweet a day. One tweet a day, very, very simple. I just tweeted out, and for you guys that don't follow me on Twitter, you need to follow me on Twitter and help me, okay? I get three or four likes and I'm not doing, I don't make money on Twitter. I do Twitter to generate churn. There's a few others that have kind of got a, a little bit of an idea of, look, we need to have a voice. Andreas uh, Rutkowskis is one of them, big uh, Discord supporter, if not one of the moder- – he's a moderator uh, and one of the Inception uh, creators of the Discord group, as well as Silent Alert and many others, Sober Trades, all those, all those cats, they're all on Twitter. You can find those guys if you go to my Twitter feed and just follow them all. Boom, 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 follow them all. Because I follow all but 14 people on Twitter, I think. I don't follow people. That's not my that's not my bailiwick. Um, I expect that if people are following me, it's because they're following the intent of what I'm looking to do in generating churn through Twitter. So I would invite you over there at In-Depth Invest. You can find me on Twitter, very, very simple. Link over from my YouTube page. Kick over there, you'll find the connections to all of those resources, okay? But super, super important. I put a tweet out today that challenged Thomas Healy to put out an opportunity for people to buy merchandise. You know how much I have scoured over the social media? I have people hit me up all the time. And they're like, Ryan, how do I buy a Hylion mug? How do I buy a Hylion shirt? If I had the opportunity to buy a Hylion sweatshirt, I would, as long as it was good quality. And that would be my only charge is if these guys could figure it out and start selling some merchandise and help this investor community assist in this cause. Because right now, a lot of us are doing this. Okay, a lot of us are doing this and they're deploying the very simple recipe that I have contended since the beginning is going to be the absolute essential uh, ingredient to the recipe of success in Hylion Holdings. And I'll give it to you now. It is time. It is time. Whether or not you want to hear that or not, the critical ingredient is time. And you sit back and say, well, I'm frustrated with the stock. Deploy time. I'm frustrated with the progress of the company. 
deploy time. I'm frustrated with myself for allowing myself to get into this position in the first place. Deploy time. Now, there is an offensive mechanism to deploying time, but deploying time means that you are not succumbing to the to temptation to give into uh, an impulse of yourself to exit a position prematurely in an opportunity that is going to take time. This is not rocket science, guys. This is stock market investing. And all too often, I find that people want to deploy emotion and they really want to fight and they really want to just call people out or they want to feel bad about themselves or they want to do this and they want to do that and they want to do this and that and this and that and this and that. And I'm telling you, most of the time, if not the vast majority of the time, is to reflect back on when you hit purchase, whether or not you hit purchase one time on your shares or you hit purchase multiple times on your share base, why you found the conviction at the time to do that, okay? Let's separate in our mind a little bit what it is going to actually take to see this thing through. To exercise time on this investment in highly on holdings, it is going to require of a lot of people, a discipline that a lot of people do not have. They'll do not have. If you can listen to me, I just gave you the goods, okay? Whether or not you're able to actually exercise the discipline necessary to actually do that is up to you. It's not up to me, okay? I come onto YouTube and I look to share the goods from the perspective of what is it that people want to hear on the investor discipline side of the house that's truly going to help them, okay? Because on the company side, I just gave you the three critical questions. Is highly on going down? The company, guys, stay with me. I, I need your attention. The company. We're going to talk the stock in just a second, and you're going to be amazed at my perspective on the stock as well. The company. I got to keep your attention. The company. Is it going down? Is it remaining neutral or is it going up? Some might say, you know, in my assessment, Ryan, it's remaining neutral. There was a lot of promises made, et cetera, et cetera. I feel like these delayed timelines and the supply chain issues and the non-transparency in the release of news and the non-transparency in the issuance of uh, how they are going to progress with mass scale and the OEMs is not sufficient for me to deem it uh, an, an evolving story. Great. Now we're thinking, okay, now we're critically evaluating the company, closing out 2022. What does it mean? Okay, if you feel like the company is going downhill to the point where your investment thesis is at a crossroad, enough to where that lack of conviction or assessment to the company that the company is going down, either slowly or at an accelerated pace, that crossroads exists for you to look at it and say, do I want to get out or do I want to remain in? Okay. That is only for you to decide. And it is not a decision that I look to uh, encourage in either way. Okay. You have to make those decisions for yourself. Me, I'm an evolving story with Hylion. Okay. Evolving. There's too many catalysts that have happened in 2020, 20, 21 and 2022 leading into 2023, which sets myself up for the next set of questions. All right. You've just asked yourself up to the current juncture, where has the Hylion story evolved to down neutral, or is it up? What are the chances through the deductive reasoning, which I've shared with you on my thought processes? How does that set us up for a 2023? Does it set us up for a 2023 that has been a looming goal and a looming checkbox and a looming path to commu commercialization that we have discussed now for going on 12 to 18 months as really kind of being that target where we're looking at Q4 2023, probably Q1 uh, 2024 right? As we step into next year, latter back half of, of next year, first half of next year, ending Q4, Q1, Q2 is going to be, and in my assessment, a continued evolution, earning uh, certification through the EPA. That's going to be huge, huge, should be a huge catalyst for the company because now we go from a 
viable product that all the people who are close to Ilion know how exciting it is to understand what the Hypertruck ERX brings to market, as well as the hybrid. But to actually achieve that certification and give that stamp of, of approval from an emissions perspective on the eligibility of those units to come to uh, commercial viability, okay, that's going to be exciting for me. If we can get out of Q4, Q1, Q2, 2023, it sets up for a fantastic end to 2023, the back half of. And you might say, I can't wait that long, Ryan, I'm out. If you can't wait that long, this is the very game that I am trying to codify for you guys as to what it takes to be an investor, okay? You want to be a dividend growth investor? All the dividend growth investors are coming onto YouTube and they're on Twitter saying, see, I told you so. I'm freaking awesome. I can take anemic growth for five years of my dividend stock, Coca-Cola Classic, Procter & Gamble that haven't moved at all. Okay, in the last five years, let's be real. And they've paid that 3% dividend and they're saying, see, my 3% dividend is so much better than being down 20% in the S&P 500. That's very, very short-sighted in the short term. Okay, if you're going to have a longer term perspective, you need to offer those comments in the context of what is going to be better for the masses on an individual basis based on the projected rates of return that you could get over the long term, okay? Dividend growth investing is fantastic. I do it myself. But to come on and profess because the market's down 20% that somehow dividend growth investing is for all is just absolutely stupid. And I'm, I'm pretty cool because I come onto YouTube and I'll tell you if I think things are stupid. Most of everything that most people have to say about investing now is stupid. They don't know their head from their asshole and they're just stupid. They're trying to generate churn on YouTube and um, I, I give all the power to them, man. Saying the right thing, fantastic. Get to that 500,000 subscribers and have people look at you as having all the right answers. I'm here to tell you with my small channel, there's not a lot of people out there, if any, that have all the answers. All right, I'll let you decide that for yourself. But how are we setting up leaving 2022 and entering into 2023? Do you feel like 12 months now we'll be doing the same scrutinization of the company and asking ourselves, how was 2023? How did we do? Did we evolve? Are we on an up shift, okay, in the company's evolution? Are we marching toward a little bit more clear uh, of an expectation for what our commercial unit sales is going to look like? Right now, I thought I had a clearer idea of commercial units sold six to 12 months ago. Uh, right now, I'm here to tell you that that is a portion of the highly on evolution that has gone completely downhill for me. Completely downhill. Completely downhill. Um, highly on seems to have a rabbit in a hat, a very white rabbit in a hat that they're going to pull out some somewhere down the line. And I, I apologize for my like Hank type of attitude here, but the CEO could come on very, very simply, just like I do with more effort to try to push information through social media. Hell, he doesn't even have to do it. He's got an investor relations committee that's doing what? Sitting on their hands all the time and announce and really give a roadmap of what this relationship with Peterbilt looks like. Because I now that... That integrity that I had and trust that I had with Hylion uh, has degraded and it has decayed over time enough to where I don't listen to Thomas Healy in the same with the same lens and with the same um, uh, reception as I did before. I don't I, and I can't not until I am put at ease in understanding that he is not just trying to save a, 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 a floundering company. OK, because in the eyes of the stock market, the company and the, the stock are linked. Absolutely. OK, make no mistake about that, guys. The Hylion's stock hit an all time low today, not for no reason. OK, if you believe that for a second, you, need, you really need to recheck your application. OK, the stock market is always trying to link the company news and the company progress, Nicola. Uh, releases a news release the beginning of this week that said that they presume that they're going to sell 5,000 units by 2027. And that presumed sales is going to save however many hundreds of thousands of metric tons of carbon emissions to the sky. The stock goes up 10%. 
okay, on really, we believe this to be happening, and we think this is going to happen, and if it does happen, this is what's going to happen. That's the way the article read to me. Nicola Bowles are going to say, oh, Ryan, you're just being, you're just being uh, unfair. No, I'm not. I just read those articles, and I just that's what I pick out of it because I'm like, 2027? We're in 2022. That's five years from now. How the hell is Nicola going to survive to then, right? It was named as one of the top 15 choices for 2023. Nicola Corporation. Nicola Corporation. And here we are sitting on this company right here that is making moves in LNG and, in my assessment, is far closer to commercialization than Nicola ever will be. Okay. So when we look at entering into 2023, we have to wonder if we're going to continue along whatever trajectory you've established in your thesis of the company. Okay. And that should help you in understanding the company bucket. Okay. Let's talk about the stock. Let's talk about the stock. It's one of my favorite things to talk about because I'm one of those fellas that I don't fear stock. Okay. I don't. I think more people need to grow a set. I think more people need to get some ferocity in their application. I think more people need to understand the power of when markets are down, that is the time when you need to be the most aggressive. You want to be a wolf or you want to be a sheep? Your choice, okay? Most people, and I'm really hard over, I call a lot of people pussies because they are. They're just pussies, all right? They, they, they float along like the feather in Forrest Gump. Okay. And wherever the wind blows them, ah, the wind blows them and that's okay with them. And then you want to know what happens? They die. Okay. Take control of your life. Okay. Don't be afraid to be wrong on a decision that you made. I've made lots of wrong decisions. I also have a catalog of right decisions. I don't make either one of them from being a feather in the wind. That was more like Stevie Wonder. But you guys understand, okay? I make a lot of decisions, a lot of decisions. A lot of them are right. Some of them are wrong. I'm okay with that because at the end of the day, I can rest on the conviction to know that I went out at something as hard as I possibly could with the intent of improving the situation, okay? The stock. Is the stock a mistake at this point? The stock at this point hitting an all-time low today um, was really not a lot of surprise to me. I don't think Hylion is helping themselves out. Um, one of my good friends here who's followed the channel for a while, uh, Mr. David, and I won't use last names, but David knows who he is, just pr uh, presented a tweet today, and it was pretty scathing. Uh, and I'm glad to see that somebody else is, can offer uh, criticism, constructive criticism. We're cut from the same cloth, so we know not to bring a criticism without a solution to the table, okay? We're cut from the same cloth. That's all I'll say about that. But David's criticism of the company was that, in part, this stock price is justified. Hylion, if they think that Christmas trees, and they think that, well, I'm thinking back, and a lot of people were like, I understand why you didn't do a video. There's no news. Uh, and I agree. I think that Hylion needs to do a better job in 2023 of being forthcoming with information. This whole educational bullshit, I, I could care less. I could care less. You need to sell some effing units. You are a publicly traded company. If you want to be a YouTube superstar, I will give you the independent investor channel. You can have it. You can call it Hylion Vision for all I care. You can have it. I'll give you this nightmare if you want. But you're not there to be a YouTube rock star, okay? You're a CEO. You are a chief executive officer. Your primary responsibility is to drive shareholder value. Thomas, it is to drive shareholder value. Is the current share price Thomas Healy's fault? No. Is the current share price a reflection of the efforts that have been put in over the last three years uh, from the top guy CEO who takes the ultimate responsibility of the company? Yes. It is absolutely a reflection of the of the CEO and the efforts that have made thus far. I don't know what type of charges are being made to the investor investor relations community. I used to talk to the last one. He got fired. Okay, I liked Louis. Okay, he, he he messed up the Discord. It was a bad mess up. It really was. He deserved to be terminated. 
I hope he watches my stuff. I don't think that he ever does. But me and him, I think he would say that our discussions uh, were good. They were good. At least there was somebody to talk to, right? And I give him that credit. He was always forthcoming with me, and he was always open to take my call. And I, I appreciated that about Louie. I haven't spoken with the new one yet. But it's as if this company operates as if they're a, a 2 or $3 billion company. They are not. And I see what goes into the hunger necessary for my OTC, OTCB, uh, uh, the, the venture uh, markets, and also the quality board markets on the, on the pink sheets. And it's as if Thomas Healy is operating as a multi-billion dollar company. And the fact of the matter is, Hylion is a micro cap company right now. It is a micro cap stock. It could just as easily get delisted and start trading on the pink sheets. Would that be the wake-up call that is necessary? The reason why I mention this is that the ferocity that I see, some of the smaller, more nimble companies, 40, 50, $100 million in market cap, and Hylion is not far off from that mark. If they don't, if they keep up this garbage, they're going to be a 100, 150 market cap because the stock market right now is not giving them any credit at all and basically calling them out and suggesting that they will not make sales. They will not. And Thomas Healy would say, oh, that's crazy. The fleet interest is enormous. And, you know, we, we have all this backlog. No, it's taken you three years to build this backlog, Thomas. And there was a tweet that came through just today that I reviewed, and it suggested that Thomas Healy was awful excited about this 200 orders. There's nothing there to be excited about unless there's some thought that the follow-on business will be forthcoming. We don't know. We don't know if they're going to be one-offs. We have no, no idea. In all fairness, I would like to suggest that it will provide a domino effect for Hylion going forward, and there will be follow-on orders. That's a presumption on my part. There's no data to back that up, and Hylion is silent on the line and will not explain that information. So going into 2023, having a little bit more transparency with regard to the goings-on at the company, some of the things I appreciated, like the internal tour of the Austin facility, that was kind of cool. But I tell you what, highly on the YouTube channel is not going to drive the needle. And it shouldn't be me to tell you that, okay? It shouldn't be me, okay? Sell some merchandise. You'd be amazed. Every person out there that owns shares in the company would buy a, a sweatshirt, a, a mug, and a hat all at the same time. They'd probably pay a hundred and a quarter for the three set package and just put that to the top line. Okay. I'll bet you the shareholder community could probably beat the $2 million that you're going to generate in 2022 for the first Q1 to Q4 quarters in 2022. I'll bet you we could beat that on the top end and you would have merchandise revenue that you could put a line item in the balance sheet and account for on the top end. I really do. I'd be one, $125 times however many share owners out there. Some people may buy multiple orders. Do what you got to do. But the thing about it is the sense that I get, and, and one of my criticisms, and this is my presumption, because a lot of people watch me and they're like, Ryan, you're too hard on the CEO. You're too, I am quick to give kudos. I am quick to give compliments. Okay. But one thing I do not sense from Thomas Healy is a sense of urgency. Now there's a difference between a sense of urgency and desperation. There's a difference. I totally get that, but I get the sense. And I'm like, this guy considers himself a race car driver. Where's the competitive spirit here? I, I just don't see it. I, I, I see that it is almost like a contempt or, or uh, uh, being uh, satisfied with being last. We had the lead position over Nikola. Nikola had driven all the way down to the low twos in their stock price. Nikola is going to close above Hylion today. Mark my word. It's going to take that leadership position again. And Hyzon is going to do the same. Both of the two stock price targets for each Nikola and Hyzon are both above Hylion right now at $3.44 per share. And the stock price right now, Hylion is above both of them. Okay, so go figure on that inverse relationship. But as a competitor, wouldn't you think that it would be beneficial to do everything that you can possibly do to let people know that you're not just working a nine to five 
You are a CEO. You should be working 20 hours a day. Sorry. Oh, Ryan, come on now. Come on. You're you're being you're being really unfair. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Walk up. What wake up. This is the really real real world. I speak with CEOs on a weekly basis and they live, breathe, and eat and sleep their company. They do. I don't sense that. I don't sense that this guy has been given $650 million of public money to make this dream of his happen. It seems like they've got it earmarked about what the burn rate is and how much they can burn over the coming months. And it's going to take, what, 15, 18 months to burn through this remaining $500 million, okay? And then we're going to be at this end point, a decision point to where Whatever that $650 million went to pay for is what we're acceptive of. Giving the wrong people opportunity like that is what happens when you don't have to actually work for that opportunity. And that's exactly what the SPAC process was. They didn't have to work for that. They didn't have to do shit. They made projections based on my presumption is that they had some information. I'll be above board. Some information to make the original projections the way that they did and fall completely short of making any type of reasonable progress toward those initial projections. Zero. I forgive. I'll buy an effing hat to show my forg forg uh, forgiveness. Right? But just be transparent. The lack of transparency makes me think that they're operating from a position of weakness. Mm -hmm. And you want to know something? I'm right on the money. And you want to know who else agrees with me on this? The stock market. The stock market is sensing weakness in this stock. It is. And it will not allow the stock to go up at all. The stock remains in the negative. It never goes positive anymore. Never, never. It spent the last nine days, I did the figures, over 90% of the time in the red. Now, is that reflective of the grander stock market? I don't know, probably. But here's the thing. I would rather accept the 90% in the red, having observed Hylion do everything they can possibly do to assist with the narrative, with some level of ferocity along the lines of what I'm trying to do, right? I don't have to do this. I don't get paid for this. I don't get paid a dime. I do it because I want to. And I'm a share owner in the company. I'm not a stake owner in the company. I'm a share owner in the company. Stakeholder. I don't work for the company. I'm not an executive. I'm not a board director. I'm not an investor relations uh, analyst. I'm not a, a technical analyst. I'm not a data and systems uh, analyst. I'm not an engineer with, with Hylion, okay? But the, the, the perception that I get, the ferocity that I get is, is transparent only with one member of Hylion when he shows up on the videos, and that's the truck driver. Their experienced truck driver seems like a very honest, genuine, hardworking guy there at every time the becking call comes for Hylion, but I need to see that permeated all the way through, and I just haven't seen that. So when we talk about a stock price right now at an all-time low you have to beg the question to suggest, go through the same deliberation, okay? Has the stock gone down? Has it remained neutral in 2022? Or has it gone up in 2022? Now, the answer to that is based on fact. The first one with the company is based a little bit more on discretion, okay? And, and it does come with some range of interpretation. The stock price, we all can agree 100% across the board, unless you just want to be an asshole and disagree with me, that the stock price has gone down and it has gone down heavy. It's down over 57% year to date, started the year at $6 a share. Here we are flirting with $2 a share. I, I'm of the opinion now where the more I start rooting for the stock to go down because I'm going to buy more, um, the better the better I feel. Because at this point, um, thinking that the stock is going to go up is absolutely futile. I left that in the barn six, eight months ago. Okay. Is, w any hope at all of the stock actually going up because Hylion has the right pedigree or the right uh, philosophy or or the right um, um, sense of urgency? It, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. They do not 
operate with the ample ferocity here in 2022, perhaps maybe for legitimate reasons, guys, but it, is, it, it has been and proved to be inadequate, inadequate stock price, all time low. It's gone down. Okay. $2 and 30 cents at the making of this video. Hopefully we can reflect back on this, understand the psychology, understand the application, understand the observance of it. Now, when I say that the stock is at an all time low, do you think that I'm uh, 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 merely suggesting that because the stock is at an all time low, that you need to rush out there and sell the stock? Of course not. Okay. The stock is what it is, and it's one of the easiest things to look at because it is, it is, if you know how to read a chart, you can know what that trajectory is. You can know what that answer is at any given second in the stock market, assuming you have refresh times that are fairly good in your internet feed, you can have real-time data to understand where in a, a, a moment of time that stock price is holding, okay? The other thing I want to bring to your guys' attention is that we draw a line from $2.30 all the way up to $58. Explain, Ryan. You got my attention. Yes, that is the very range of the stock, okay? $2.30 to $58, okay? Now, we draw an inverse relationship between those two, and we remember with the stock at $58, it was there. Whether or not it ever reaches there again is immaterial. It's futile to have those discussions. What we are doing is focusing on the known range, the known range, $58, $2.30. Now, if the very explanation of the story evolving with the company that we explained and the very digression in the stock price that we all agreed with 100%, 99%, because I always have detractors, they're going to disagree with me no matter what, okay, have digressed in such a fashion okay, to draw this distinction between the company where it was at $58 and where it is now and draw the relative correlation between the stock now, okay, and the company right now. How do you think we set up with that correlation into 2023? That's the key. That's why you subscribe to me. It's because I generate those rhetorical questions to make you think. If I believe that we have the opportunity to bring people along on this impossible journey, it's impossible. This company, I feel like, is going to do something. And when I reflect back on this and I reflect back on wealth building and how it is that I got to wealth in some capacity and people ask me is it easy or difficult i'm going to tell them it's it's super difficult people who come on and they say that getting rich or making wealth or becoming financially secure is easy they they are full of shit they're full of shit either that or they are so full of shit that they fail to understand that they were given a start and with that start, they put that start to risk and became very, very lucky. I do not teach people how to become lucky. I don't believe that's possible. What I can do is I can teach people how to put themselves on an opportunity based on deductive reasoning. Based on deductive reasoning, I've given you an opportunity to understand my thought processes and what this co company and what this stock is telling us, okay? Okay. A lot of different catalysts along the way have been provided, okay, in little nuggets to understand what this investment thesis is when you bundle it all up and you put a little bow on it, okay, what it means to you, okay? What it means to me is that everything that I do know, catalyst, thesis, thousand miles of range, okay, C and G, R and G play, driver experience, the highly on board the low cost to operate, the cash on the books, the intended cash, the margins, okay? The ability to maybe recognize revenue in 2023 that's material, okay? All these little things, the need, the mandates, the state incentives, okay? The company's desire to, to change, okay? I believe that, this is in my thesis, 
I believe that it's in the company's best interest to at least look at and entertain the possibility of moving from a diesel-dominated past to an agnostic future. And I say agnostic to include the whole kit and caboodle, okay? Hydrogen, fuck it, ammonia, methanol. I don't care. As long as it gives fleets optionality to start the data gathering on each of these fuels, what are the drawbacks? What are the safety concerns? What is the performance? What is the range? What is the availability? How do the drivers respond to it? What are the driver's feedback? What is the cost of the fuel? That might have something to do with it. Instead of tying yourself to an anchor of diesel all the time, only to allow your business to succumb to the whims of OPEC on a given announcement. Then the thesis. In the thesis. To where I believe we are marching toward a better tomorrow in the United States of America, at least here. European countries, they're already ahead of us. They already understand that their neighbor doesn't play nice. The majority of the countries don't play nice. Okay? And they've figured it out that they have to go at fuel freedom with ferocity. Okay? It's more than just a highly on story at this point. And I really wish I could sit across from Thomas Healy and understand that there is passion there that I just don't see. Perhaps it's buried deep. Perhaps it's upstairs. Perhaps he's more level-headed. I don't know. But level-headed and giving the perce perception of complacency for me, and I'm sorry about that tag, but I'm going to award it because I sense complacency here. Because the disparity between the company doing all these great things, of course they're doing great things. They've been given $650 million to do those great things, to acquire a Carno technology at a time where they shouldn't be doing acquisitions at all. But I get it. I get it. It makes total sense. But a sense of urgency is probably in order. All-time low. Mark the date, December uh, 22nd of 2022, marks a perfect end to an effed up year. I, I get it. It's been absolutely shitty. It's just been a shitty year. All year, it's been absolutely horrendous with the increase in interest rates, with the increase in um, the interest rates to fight inflation, um, with the god-awful real, uh, real estate market that got way too overheated and way too hot is only making the real estate game available to hedge funds now. Your sense of ferocity as a stock market investor, when it comes to your investor philosophy, you need to borrow a piece of my aggressiveness because this is not something that's just blasé. This is not feather in the wind shit, okay? This is serious business and your future, your future depends on it, okay? Get a little bit of motivation, get a little bit of an understanding of why I do this product with such ferocity. And if you presume that I'm not going to do this product because I presume or you presume or the grander community presumes that because Hylion doesn't have any information, then I'm not going to come on and, and, and talk about this story as it pertains to the empowered individual. Okay? Hylion will eventually make it. Those that deploy my critical ingredient of time, time, time will be just fine, okay? They will at least give themselves that opportunity for the first look. Those that go through the deliberation to actually exit stage left, I cannot blame you for that. I cannot blame you, but you are setting yourself up for regret if in fact this highly on story ends up to be something that you presume it not to be capable of doing now in the short term but you don't have the ability to award that ample time for this story to actually unfold in front of us, okay? So very important when we're understanding about the investor psychology to continue to explain to people, there are people out there with either one share or tens of thousands or multiple 50,000 shares in the company. Everywhere along that spectrum, there's different applications, different psychologies, different reactions to emotion as they hold this stock. That's where I come in. 
Okay. And I don't look to buy into the whims of here's the nerve that we have to follow this week. No, no, no. If you go back through my highly on catalog, it's been 100% either 100%. Here's what I'm seeing right now. Here's my criticism of the company or 100% over here. Here's where I see this company as it's evolved in its story in 2022. And I will sit across from a YouTube audience and you can have your opinions of me one way or the other, but I am always looking to be fair. I am not a rude person. I sit back and I'm a very, very good judge of people. When I look Thomas Healy in the eye, when he is doing interviews, I believe in my heart of hearts that he is a genuine, sincere, very capable, very, very smart individual more than capable of running this company. And if you want to say that they're being silenced, I would say that perhaps maybe they're being careful, okay? Careful, because if you haven't woken up to the fact that there's been a lot of SPAC companies that have incurred legal scrutiny, okay? Hylion has the goods. They don't have to be forthcoming in a way that I charge them to be. Do I want them to do more? Yes. Is it necessary for them to succeed along that path? to commercialization with a tweet a day? Of course not. Of course not. But when I look at the scrutiny of the company and there is scrutiny to be had, I think they're really not helping their case if they're being as aggressive as they possibly can to really earmark those areas uh, of the company. I'm able to come up with content every single week and I'm an outsider. Like I said, I'm not a stakeholder in the company. I am a share owner in the company. So the only information that I have that I'm privy to is publicly discernible information. I'm on an island and I look to share those perceptions based on what we know with the company, the stock price, and especially the investor psyche every single week on the Independent Investor Channel. That should close us down going into the year's end if I can fit one more highly on video in. I absolutely will. It's su super important for us to understand the ingredient of time and how it applies to highly on and the investment that we're making. This is risky investment. What makes it risky is the fact that people cannot, in most cases, get out of their own way to understand what the big picture is here and what we're trying to accomplish with Hylion Holdings and the earth and the country being a better place with Hylion as opposed to without it. Guys, I appreciate the continued support on the channel. If you like the message, subscribe to the channel, man. It costs you nothing. I'm not going to send you a bill. Just touch it or massage it or caress it or we'll do whatever you got to do to touch it and provide the independent investor channel a little bit of support. You will find that I am probing. I am charging. I get under your skin. Okay. I'm not looking to coddle your asshole for you. All right. I'm looking to motivate you to think for yourself and understand that there's a lot more sense of urgency around this game than you or most people out there in the wild give it credit for. Guys, leave your comments at the bottom of the video. I appreciate you guys. Have a merry, merry Christmas, and we'll catch you in the next one.